Hey, Osiris here with a armor leveling guide for Final Fantasy XIV. In this quick guide, we're going to go over everything you need to know to level up armor. I want to start with some quick tips, and then I'm going to go into the best leaves to pick. And now that patch 2.1 has been out, there's now um, economical leaves, we'll say, as well as the traditional repeatable leaves. Sometimes it's better if you have extra leave allowances. You can save a lot of gill by skipping the repeatable leaves. So I'm going to compare both of those and tell you, you know, what, what the best one to pick is. And finally, I'm going to give you some grinding options. If you're out of leave allowances and still want to level up, I'm going to provide some options for you there as well. So the first thing I wanted to talk about before we go jump into the leaves or the grinding is going to be um, some tips for leveling. And the first tip is when you are crafting, you're going to tr want to try to maximize the quality score, at least if skill is a concern, and the reason for that is the higher your quality score gets during any craft, the higher your experience points earned are going to be. You get a bonus based on the quality score. So secondly, you're going to want to use some food. I uh, like raw oysters. They barely cost anything. A stack of 99 is only about 3,000 gil off the market boards, and it provides a 3% food bonus, of course, but it also gives you a little extra control. And control is going to help you boost that quality score, which is already established, will give you more experience points. So next, let's talk about equipment. Um, when you're crafting, you're going to want to use, you're going to want to keep your weapon and your offhand up to date as best you can. Um, and the reason for that is, as you can see from just looking at this, the offhand and the main hand have huge craftsmanship and control bonuses. And if we compare that to um, the crafting armor, it's just not even close. Even the high quality, best stuff. And the jewelry just mostly provides CP. I mean, of course you can gem it, but that's not really relevant when you're leveling up. So if you want to save some gill, just replace your main hand and offhand regularly and only replace your armor two or three times during the entire leveling process. Uh, a couple of my crafts I leveled with just literally a level 15-ish to 20 set and a level 30 set and that was it and that worked perfectly fine and you know as I started to earn more gill I replaced it with a level 40 set and you can get a grand company set at level 40 as well but you don't have to do that. Uh, the only thing you really want to replace every five levels or so is your main hand and your off hand. Next up, let's talk about the engineering manual. This gives you bonus experience points. It's sold by the grand company. It's very good at low levels. Gives you up to 40,000 bonus experience points. And from level one to about 30, that's pretty significant. And once you get past 30, it's not very significant at all. You know, it requires like 500,000 experience to go from 49 to 50. 40,000 bonus is a drop in the bucket. It's not even worth going out of your way to get practically. You know, a leave turn in pays out more than the whole entire bonus of the engineering manual. However, at the low levels, it's huge. You, know, you can use this manual level 2 here, and it'll last you all the way up to level 15. And about 4 or 5 of these total will get you all the way to 30. And that's really all you need. And finally, last tip, is if you're looking to save leave allowances and even gills sometimes, you want to turn in high quality items. You know, they did nerf the amount of experience point bonus you get in 2.1. They cut it to a, a double from triple, but double is still good, especially given that leave allowances are a limited item. Okay, so let's talk about leaves. So armor gets their leaves in Limsa Lominsa right here, and they also get them out in the game world, just like all the other crafts at the same camps. So, you know, from levels 1 to 20, you don't really get any repeatable leaves. You don't get unlock those until level 20. And you can pretty much grind to level 20 if you're even remotely concerned about your leave allowances. If you aren't, you can go ahead and do the um, bronze barbot quest here. That one's pretty decent. And then the iron skillet quest is pretty good all over that. And finally, I like the iron curious quest. Of course, it's the last one I picked every time. And it just provides a little bit more experience than some of the other ones for whatever reason. And we always want to go to Bango Zango just because he's in Limsa Lominsa. This one provides more experience and it's an easy item, but this guy is not close. So if you do want to spend leaves before level 20, that's how you do it. 
Okay, once you hit level 20, we're actually going to get a quarry mill. It has both the best repeatable leave and the best um, economical leave, so quarry mill. And the best repeatable leave there, it's going to be iron salatus, three of them. And the most economical leave is going to be an iron alembic. And you know, the iron alembic leave pays about 50, it pays about 1.5 times the experience I'm sorry, it pays close to double the experience of repeatable leave, but repeatable leaves can be turned in three times. So repeatable leave pays, you know, 50% more experience total than the Iron Alembic, but obviously you only have to turn in one Iron Alembic versus nine Iron Saleta for the repeatable leave. Okay, so at level 25, we're going to come back to Limsa Lamensa. We're not going to do the Quarry Mill quests. And at level 25, there's two good options here. So Steel Tacits, I actually really don't like this repeatable leave. You know, it's the best, but they're both pretty poor at level 25. What I do like is this. You know, it's a Steel Ingot. It pays about, again, 1.5 times the experience points. And what you can do here is you can actually buy high quality Steel Ingots off of the market boards for about 500 gil apiece. And you get a bonus skill reward, and sometimes you get things like Ball Mash or Cluster or Crystals. And Ball Mash is, is a decent value. So you buy a Steel Ingot for 500 gil, high quality. You turn it in, you get like 375 gil back, and this experience point reward doubles. So it's like you're practically buying turn-ins for free, and you're just clicking complete, and you get... 20,000 experience or 40,000 experience points and that's it. That's what I would do to level th to level 30. Okay, so once you get to level 30, the best repeatable leave is actually going to be back in Limsil Minsa and that is the steel plated jack boots. And as you can see, this is you know it's a significant jump. So you probably don't want to turn in steel ingots at this level. You know, this is 20,000 Whereas this is close to 20,000. Know, this is providing him three times the amount of experience points. Obviously, you can do the high quality trick if you have unlimited leave allowances and really don't care. Just want to power through. That does work well enough. But another good economical leave is actually going to be in Costa del Sol, which is in eastern La Nucia. And we're already in La Nucia. And it's going to be down here, and that's for with the white skillet, which is a pretty cheap item itself. You know, it only costs four or five hundred gil to make. So, not a bad option either there. So, once we hit level 35, I actually recommend not doing repeatable leaves. And the reason for that is there's another ingot quest, but this time it's even better. So, as you can see, the mithril ingot quest here pays 43k. Well, the repeatable leave you know, only pays 24. It's almost double. So if you actually go ahead and buy that high quality mithril ingot for about 600 gil on the market boards, this is going to turn into 86,000 experience points. Single item, single turn in, you're going to get 500 gil back, plus you're going to get shards and other random items along the way. So it's practically free, and you get 80,000 per leave. You know, in this range, you only need to do three or four quests to get a full level up. You know, you can just fly through these 10 levels with your, you know, you can convert 100 leave allowances into 10 free levels and not even look back. It'll be level 45. And again, I actually recommend skipping the level 40 leaves and just sticking to this one and just turning in the high quality ingots. But if you do want to go to level 40, you know, the best leaves here are actually both going to be in Wiperim. There's a camp out in Wiperim and Corthus, and it's going to be out here. There's a level 40 repeatable leave for the Mithril Elmo, and there is a Mithril Van Braces, a f more affordable leave. But I still think, you know, if you're going for economy, you got to go for that Mithril Ingot quest and just take it to 45. And once you get to level 45, there's actually um, a camp out in Mordana at St. Quinix Find. And what you're going to find there is a repeatable leave that requires three Cobalt Ingots, just to give you an idea. It's near Revenant Stole, right here. Three cobalt ingots, it's repeatable. Cobalt ingots are super cheap. You don't even have to get the high quality ones. You can just buy the regular ones or craft them yourself. You can craft them yourself, they're only like 120 gil a piece. Well, the quest itself pays out, you know, four or five hundred gil as a reward. You're, you'll turn it in for free, and it's a repeatable leave. So it's great experience, easy all the way to 50. So if you want to basically armor, it's very easy to level if you want to take the time and do the ingot leaves. 
you know, if you're going to go from level 25, where the seal and got leave starts, to level 50, for free, you can, it just requires about 200 leaves, and you're going to burn about through about 150 leaves to move from 25 to 45, and then 45 to 50 is pretty quick, just because the cobalt ingot leave is so good, and it's a repeatable leave. But, you know, if you want to take the time to just save up your leave allowances, you can level up armor for free. If you want to go the repeatable leave route, or the grinding route, which I'm going to discuss shortly, it can get very expensive. Um, actually, grinding in armor is not too bad. I, I want to take that back. Uh, you don't really make anything of value, you just make materials. And let me open up my recipe book. Let's see. Yep, let's see. General. Sorry, taking me a second to pull this up. They changed the... I don't know what I'm doing right now. It's kind of hard to think sometimes when you're recording a video live. Okay, so now that I'm back to, back to focusing, from levels 1 to 6, we're just going to make bronze ingots. From levels 6 to 7, we're going to make bronze rings using the bronze ingots we just made. And then from 7 to 8, we're going to make bronze plates. If you run out of bronze ingots, you can buy more at the um, tradecraft supplier. It's somewhere in this region. You'll see um, one of these shops will be a tradecraft supplier. They sell bronze ingots for like two gil. It's cheaper than making them yourself and faster too. So with all those items, we're then going to make bronze chain coifs. You can buy leather off the guild supplier, and you'll make that until level 10. So once we're out of the early range, we're going to make iron ingots. You can buy iron ill iron ore off of the guild supplier down here. So the reason why that's important is because a lot of players think they have to buy this on the market boards. Only the armorer and blacksmith guild sell iron ore. No other guild supplier sells iron ore. So you have to buy it there, but then we can make iron ingots all the way up to level 18. And we're just going to bank up those ingots because we need them for the next stage of grinding. Then from 18 to about 20 and a half, we're going to make iron ingots. Or I'm sorry, we're going to make iron rivets using some of the iron ingots, but not all of the ones we had previously made. Then from 20 and a half to about 22, we're going to make iron plates. And once we've converted all our iron ingots into plates and iron rivets in about equal amounts, we're going to jump up to the iron alembic recipe. And you can see it just uses one of each. So we'll have all those materials already ready, and we'll be able to craft this for free. Just the shard cost will be there. Which, you know, if you vendor the Iron Alembics, you'll get your shard cost back with probably a little bit of gill. So you can actually go from 10 to 22 on nothing but iron ore. Or, I'm sorry, yeah, we're going to take the Iron Alembic to 24, I'm sorry. So iron ore will take us from 10 to 24. And since you're vendoring this back at the end, the cost is, is not that much. You know, you might spend 30,000 gill grinding those 15 levels. And if you use the engineering manual, it could be even lower. Okay, so from 24 to 31, we're going to make steel ingots. Now, ball mash does get a little bit expensive sometimes. You do have to buy it off the market boards. And you're going to grind off of steel ingots all the way to level 31. And once you have ground all the way to 31, we're going to start making steel rings out of these steel ingots. You know, we've already got the ingots, so we can just turn those into steel rings. You're going to do that to level 34. And you can sell the rings and you can sell the extra steel ingots because we don't actually need them after this. Um, you can use these ingots as part of the, you know, the quest that I discussed earlier, the leaf. So especially if you make any high quality ones. The next step is going to be from 34 to level 40, we're going to make mithril ingots. And what I recommend is using the mithril ingots that you make, especially if you make any high quality ones, to do the leave that I discussed earlier, you know, from this guy here. If you turn in that high quality leave, you, a high quality mithril ingot is part of leave, you get 86,000 experience points. It's just a lot better than grinding. But if you insist on grinding, you're going to do this all the way to level 40. And you can always, you know, change your mind and turn in some of those ingots as you see fit. Okay, so from 40 all the way up to level 50, we're going to make cobalt ingots. And same thing, once you turn level 45, you can turn in the cobalt ingots you've already crafted as part of your grinding for leveling into the, um, into the NPC at the St. Coinix find. 
and that's a good repeatable leaf. You know, you got the items. If you don't want to do leaves for some reason, you can eventually convert those extra cobalt ingots to cobalt rings, starting at about level 48. I wouldn't do it any sooner because you know, as you get leave allowances back, you might decide that you want to turn in your cobalt ingots. And you can always sell these back on the market boards. They do have a little bit of value, especially to other players leveling armor. So that's about it for the armor guide. Go ahead and subscribe for more Final Fantasy XIV videos.